Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hey YouTube, what's going on? This is Nate here, and in this video I'm going to be doing a complete iOS 5 overview, so you'll know what to expect when you get your hands on it when it is released to the public on October 12th. So currently I have my iPhone 4 running the Goldmaster version of iOS 5, and I'm just going to start off by going over the more prominent features, and then we'll just gradually work our way down. So we'll start off with the first one, which is PC Free. So now in iOS 5, when you bring your device home and power it on for the first time, you're no longer going to be greeted with that connect to iTunes screen. Instead, you'll be able to set up the device right then and there using personal setup. So let me go ahead and walk you through that process. The first thing you can do is select your language and your country, and then you'll be able to enable location services if you wish. Then you'll want to go ahead and connect to a Wi-Fi network. And then you can either set up the device as a new iPhone, restore from an iCloud backup, or restore from an iTunes backup. We'll just set it up as a new device. Then you're going to want to go ahead and enter your Apple ID. Once you have done that, you can go ahead and agree to the terms and conditions. And then we'll go ahead and set up your Apple ID. Next, you'll be able to set up your uh, device with iCloud, and you can turn on the iCloud backup feature as well. Then you can turn on the Find My iPhone. And then if you want to, you can automatically send diagnostics and usage to Apple. And that pretty much wraps it up for personal setup. So now we'll get into iOS 5 itself and take a look at some more PC-free features. So in addition to personal setup, Apple has added the ability to download over-the-air software updates. So if you add into settings and then the general section, you'll notice the software update tab here. If you select it, we'll go ahead and check for an update. Of course, since this is the Goldmaster version, this feature is not working at this point. But when a software update does become available, you'll be able to download it right on the device and install it. So there's no need for iTunes. Additionally, this will work over a Wi-Fi or 3G connection, and it is a Delta update, so you're only going to download the changes, not the entire firmware like you would have to with iTunes. Additionally, Apple's adding the ability to have automatic iCloud backups of your device made. So if you head into iCloud, scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the storage and backup area. If you select it, you'll see this toggle to turn on the iCloud backup feature. By doing so, backups on your device will automatically be made whenever your device is plugged in, the screen is locked, and it is connected to a Wi-Fi network. So if you're like me and you happen to charge your device at night before you go to bed, backups are automatically going to be made for you. So you don't have to worry about using iTunes or anything like that. Additionally, you can manually make a backup at any time by selecting Backup Now and everything will be backed up for you. So the combination of the iCloud backup, personal setup, and over-the-air software updates allow you to own an iOS device without having to have a computer. Now many of you out there still may be interested in using iTunes to manage your music and your apps. If that's the case, you'll be able to do so over Wi-Fi in iOS 5. So if you head into General and in an iTunes Wi-Fi sync, you'll see the ability to sync now. You'll see that it is currently hooked up to my iMac, so let's go ahead and get started. And you'll see the process has begun on my computer. And it looks like it's all finished up. The next feature we're going to talk about in iOS 5 is Notification Center. Notification Center can be accessed by swiping down from the top of your, your device's screen. And the first thing you're going to notice here are these two widgets. So this first one's a weather widget. It'll give you your current weather conditions, as well as a six-day forecast. This bottom one is a stock widget. So if you swipe through, you can take a look at how the stocks are doing for the day. Selecting either of these widgets will bring you into the app that they came from. So to show you how Notification Center works, let me go ahead and send myself a text message. So this is the new style of notification in iOS 5. It's the uh, banner sort of notification. It's much better than the iOS 4 style because you can simply choose to do nothing and the notification will go away. They're not obtrusive like they were in iOS 4 where you'd have to choose to either reply or close the notification right then and there. So if you want to access that notification that came in, simply open up Notification Center. You'll see it there, and if you select it, it'll bring you right into the app. Additionally, you can choose just to reply to the notification right then and there. So if I select this, it'll bring me into Messages. Now let me go ahead and show you how lock screen notifications work. So I'll send myself another text. So you're going to see the notification up here, here in this bubble 
um, and it's got a black uh, color as opposed to the blue color that we saw in iOS 4. And what you can do is select the icon of the app that it came from, and you can simply slide to reply. So if I select this, it'll bring me right into messages. Now let me show you how multiple notifications look in the lock screen. So you'll see the first one came in there, and then there's the second one. So they'll just stack up on top of each other as more and more no notifications come in. So you can select either of these, and it'll bring you right into messages. And of course, this will work the same with any app. You can also choose to slide to reply right down here. You'll see that it says that. And it'll bring us right into messages. So with Notification Center, there's a lot of customization. So if you head into Settings and Notifications, you'll be able to sort apps manually or by time and you'll have a lot of customization over each individual app in Notification Center. So for example, if I wanted to remove something from Notification Center, simply select it and turn off, and you'll see that the weather widget is now gone. Next, you can uh, customize how things are going to appear in Notification Center. So I can choose to have as, uh, as few as one recent item appear, or as many as 10. Additionally, you can choose the kind of alert style that you want. So you can choose to have none, the banner, which is the style that I just showed you with messages, or the alert, which is the iOS 4 style of notification. You can also turn on the ba turn off and on the badge app icon. You can turn off the preview. You can have the uh, alert repeated more than once, so you can choose up to 10 or um, as few as none. And then you can also choose to have it on or off in the lock screen. You can also change the order of how apps will appear in the lock screen uh, for their corresponding notifications. So let's say I want to have my uh, text messages appear before all my emails in Notification Center. Simply select it and drag it on top of on top of the other one. So those are the nice uh, customizations with Notification Center and how Notification Center works in iOS 5. The next features that we're going to talk about in iOS 5 deal with the camera and photo apps. So now in iOS 5, Apple is giving you quick access to the camera right from the lock screen. Simply double tap the home button, select the camera icon, and it'll bring you right here to take a photo. Additionally, you can now turn on a grid if you choose to under options and you'll see it as appeared here. Next if you want to you can take a photo by selecting the volume up button. So go ahead and take one. And additionally you can lock the auto exposure and auto focus simply by holding down. So we'll go ahead and do that. You'll notice the little square bounce there and when it does that it will now say the auto focus and auto exposure has been locked down there at the bottom. So no matter where I move the camera that same point will remain locked. So now if I want to go ahead and access the photo that I just took, I can simply swipe and we'll see it right there. If we want to get back to the camera, you can either select this blue camera icon or you can just swipe and then swipe back. Now let's talk about editing photos. So we'll head into photos for that. And we can just select this uh, photo that we just took. If you want to edit the photo, simply select edit in the upper right hand corner. First you can rotate the photo. You can auto enhance the photo. You can remove red eye, which I'll show you in a second. You can also crop the photo. So you can change it to any dimensions that you want, or you can choose one of these preset dimensions here, and it'll go ahead and change that up for you. So if you want to crop it, simply choose crop. And then if you want to save these changes, you can, or if you messed up or something, you can just select cancel, and it will revert back to the original photo. So now let me show you that red eye feature. So you'll see I have this little notification there. We'll go ahead and choose edit. I'm going to choose red eye remover. We'll put it right over the two and you'll see that it did remove it. So it does in fact work. If we choose apply then, it'll go ahead and save that. So those are the changes to the photo and camera apps. Next up is Twitter integration. So in iOS 5, Apple has built Twitter right into the OS. So if you add into settings, you'll notice the new Twitter section right here. And you'll be able to install the app from right from here, as well as sign in with your account. Once you have done that, you'll be able to tweet various things. So let's head into photos. If we select this photo here, we can bring up the options menu. We can just tweet. It'll bring up this little tweet box for us. So you can type your message right here. If you want to, you can add location information, and then you'll see the little preview of the picture right there. Once you're done, then you can go ahead and send it. This also works then with Safari. So if we want to tweet this web page right here, select tweet, and you'll see the same options uh, as far as the message, the uh, location information, and the preview. And last but not least, you can also do this with YouTube. So I have this uh, random video right here. I can choose share video, tweet, and once again, you'll see the same options. So that's Twitter integration. 
The next feature that we're going to talk about in iOS 5 is iMessage. This is Apple's new messaging system that's been built right into the operating system, and I think it's going to be great for iPad and iPod Touch owners because they'll now be able to communicate with other iOS devices without having to download uh, a third-party app from the App Store. So you're going to notice here for the iPad, the uh, messaging system looks very similar to the way it does on the iPhone, but you've got this nice uh, profile image there as well. So I currently have a conversation set up between my iPad and my iPhone, and let me just show you some of the nice features of iMessage. So I'll go ahead and send my iPhone a message. You'll see it appears there, and it just came through. So in iOS 5, you are with iMessage, you're going to get delivery confirmation, so you'll see it says delivered right there, because it in fact has appeared now on my iPhone. Additionally, you'll be able to see when the other person's uh, typing, so if I start typing a message here, uh, you'll see that those three dots there, that indicates that the person you're co having a conversation with is currently typing up a message. We'll go ahead and send it. Next we're going to talk about updates to Safari. So with the iPad now, there is a tabbed browsing experience. So you can open new, up a new tab by selecting the plus icon right here. It'll open up one for you, and you can quickly and easily switch between these tabs. Next is Reader. So Reader brings the content right to your face by selecting the Reader button right here, gets rid of all the ads, and just brings the text right in front of you. You can also do that then with the iPhone, so you'll see that there. If you want to increase the text size, you can easily do that. Select the uh, bigger A or the smaller A to change the font size. Next we're going to talk about Reading List. So what Reading List is, is it allows you to save a web page that maybe you don't have time to read now, but you want to remember to read in the future. You can bring up the options menu, you can choose add to reading list, it will add it to your reading list then. You can open this up then, choose reading list, and you'll see the web page there in your unread list. If you select it, it will go ahead then and just open up the page for you, and once you have read it then, it will move to the all pile. So those are the changes to Safari. Next I wanted to talk about two really awesome iPad only features. The first is multi-touch gestures, so you can easily open up the multitasking bar down here by simply swiping up, so that's really great. The next one will allow you to swipe between all your um, open apps that you have in the multitasking bar. So if you swipe through here, it'll just open up all those apps for you quickly and easily. And lastly, you can get back to the home screen now by pinching in. So you'll see it brought me there. So let me show you again. Uh, we'll do it slower this time. So you'll see the page just kind of shrinks down and it brings you right to the home screen. And next I wanted to talk about the keyboard. So in iOS 5, Apple has made typing with the iPad a bit better. So let's say I want to type in this web address here. You can select this icon right here. You can choose split. It'll go ahead and split the keyboard for you. And what's great about this is it makes it much easier to go ahead then and type with your thumbs. Because when the keyboard is docked and merged, it can be hard to reach these middle keys. By splitting it up, it makes it sort of like you're typing on an iPhone or an iPod Touch, which is much easier. Next up, we'll talk about Reminders, which is a new default application that Apple has added in iOS 5. So let's just go ahead and create a new event. So we can say uh, my dad's birthday is coming up, so we can put dad's b-day. And then we can press return. Now for this reminder, we have uh, um, some nice options. So the first is you can set it to remind you on a certain day. So we'll turn that on. And it's going to be on October 12th, and let's say I want it to remind me at 6 a.m. So we'll turn that on and then we can choose done. Additionally, you could add location information if you wish. So if I wanted it to remind me upon returning home from school, I could uh, have that option enabled as well. Then once you're done with that event, you can choose the check mark and it will be added to your completed list right there. So that's reminders. Lastly, I wanted to mention newsstand. This is a new uh, folder that Apple has added to the home screen in iOS 5. And it looks very similar to the uh, bookshelves that you'll find in iBook and iBooks and what it does is it manages all your magazine subscriptions so if I sign up for a new magazine subscription that will be automatically added to my newsstand folder here and uh, whenever the um, whenever the company publishes out a new magazine it will automatically be downloaded in this folder so it's a great way to manage all your subscriptions in one convenient place eventually the store uh, button will work here so Apple's going to be adding a new uh, section in the App Store that is made specifically for getting new magazine subscriptions, uh, but since this is the Gold Master version, Apple still has not added that yet. So that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, feel free to check out my channel and watch the part two video, which covers all the more minor features in iOS 5. A link in the description will be provided for that video. Other than that, I'd like to give a big thanks to Chris for uh, supporting me with this video, and I hope to see you guys in the next one.